Hello friends, welcome to the next short video which is part of the Ahargana series. In my videos so far, I have explained to you that in the geocentric model, Stellarium is able to show us seven of the nine Navagrahas, Saptagrahas, but not Rahu and Ketu, because Rahu and Ketu are not physical objects, they are just points in space. In this video, I will make an effort to explain to you, to illustrate to you the idea of Rahu and Ketu, and if they are points in space, where are they? To start my illustration, I am first turning on a few of the brightest stars in the sky. But out of all these stars, I will draw your attention to this star, Dhruva. Now, you may already know that Dhruva is the North Star. In English, it's called the Pole Star or Polaris. And to show you that it's indeed north, I have shown you in the very first episode that in this model I am facing north. I am in Bangalore and I am facing north. But take a look again, here is the ground and here is the directions and Dhruva is indicating the northern direction. So far so good. So now the point I am making is that any celestial object which is within this ecliptic circle is north of the ecliptic. And any celestial object which is outside this ecliptic circle is south of the ecliptic. For instance, Shravana and Abhijit are north of the ecliptic because as you move from the ecliptic towards Dhruva, you come across Shravana and Abhijit. So they are all north of the ecliptic, just like Dhruva. On the other hand, Jeshta is south of the ecliptic. Now, I know this concept may sound a little bit strange because typically in a map you expect to see north on the top, south in the bottom. If you are looking at a globe, you see north in the top of the globe, south pole at the bottom of the globe. Whereas here I am saying inside the circle is north, outside is south. But stay with me on this one as I proceed now further. Now, in order to show you the actual position of Rahu and Ketu, I have to do one more thing, which is I am going to now turn off the ground, I will turn off the directions, but I am going to show you the orbit of the moon. Take a look. Now you are seeing two circles. The first circle you know is the ecliptic, that's the one in green, that's the orbit of the sun around the earth in 365 days in the geocentric model. Now the white circle is the orbit of the moon around the earth. And of course moon revolves much faster. You know that it takes 27.3 days to come back to its starting point and 29.5 days to go from one Amavasya to the next Amavasya. But anyway, so the orbit of the moon is very similar to the orbit of the sun, but not exact. So right now you can see that the moon is south of the ecliptic, but at this point, somewhere near Rohini, it crosses the ecliptic and goes to the north. Now that point is Rahu. Same way as the moon moves north of the ecliptic like this, in along this path, and somewhere here near Jeshta, it crosses the ecliptic and goes from the north back to the south. And that point is Ketu. So this point here is Rahu near Rohini and this point near Jeshta is Ketu. Now to make you get a better feel of this, like I said you always expect north to be at the top, south to be at the bottom. So I'm going to do a little bit of stellarium magic right in front of your eyes. I'm going to switch this view and show you a different view. I'm going to switch to something called an orthographic projection and I will also turn on the equatorial grid of date and see what happens. You start getting a three-dimensional view of a globe with the Dhruva right at the North Pole. So what is this globe? The lines are still there. Here you see this red line and if I can get the moon into the picture, 
here is the white line now. So the lines are still there. But the whole view has changed completely. It, it's looking three-dimensional and it's looking like a globe, like a ball. Now, this globe that you are seeing in front of you is not the terrestrial sphere. It is not the earth. Don't look for India, don't look for America, don't look for Africa. On this, you will not find it. Because what you are seeing in front of you is a concept, a modeling concept called a celestial sphere. It essentially models the entire space above our head, which surrounds the earth, as a much larger sphere, which is actually of infinite radius. But of course, anything with an infinite radius, you cannot model it, right? So, Stellarium is making it a finite radius, making it a ball, fitting it on the screen and showing you the celestial sphere. This is the space above our heads. So, somewhere in the center of this three-dimensional effect which it's creating, somewhere here is the Earth. You can't see it, but this is the space surrounding the Earth. Now, you can very clearly see that the Moon is south of the ecliptic. And here, near Rohini, it's crossing over to the north of the ecliptic, and this point is hence Rahu. So, let me get the Moon to start moving. It's moving very slowly. Let me speed it up a little bit. So there is Rahu. And now it crossed over to the north of the ecliptic. Now you can clearly see it is north of the ecliptic. And it's approaching the crossover point, which is Ketu. And there it crossed over to the south of the ecliptic. So this is the concept of Rahu and Ketu which are in the north and south of the ecliptic. And typically they are exactly like I said, they are not physical bodies, but points in space where the orbit of the sun and the moon intersect. And based on the direction of movement of the moon, one of them where the moon comes from the south of the ecliptic to the north is Rahu and the other one is Ketu. Now, in English, these two points are called ascending and descending nodes of the moon. They're very unimaginative names. Whereas in our tradition, these are called Rahu and Ketu. That brings me to the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching.